So this is part two of my lecture on the Prisoner of Azkaban, particularly the Shrieking Shack sequence, page 324 through 421, which, uh, as I've said, is the most brilliant piece of storytelling I've ever come across. Um, as I mentioned, I read all of these in the summer of 2015. Um, the people I worked with at Borders in the early 2000s were among the real first adopters of Harry Potter and I think the people that had worked at the store longer than I had uh, in the late 90s were the people that really, uh, in bookstores everywhere, not just Borders, but in everywhere, um, England and the United States and around the world, were really promoting this book uh, as fans who, um, to, their, to their adult readers. Otherwise, this book might have just stayed in the kids section. Um, I think the, the, the earliest advocates for Harry Potter were the uh, booksellers uh, of... Uh, bookstores around the world and I think they were drawn to the non-bullying ethos of Harry Potter you noticed how every every book starts out Harry is living with his evil step parents who are mistreating him they make him live under the stairs um, they tell him he's a freak because he's a magician um, and I think that's a powerful metaphor because what makes you different is your power um, that's a very important message. Uh, it might not be what society thinks you should be like. Uh, it's not what the muggle world thinks you should be. The muggles want you to conform and be just like them. They don't, they're not just non-magical people. They're also unimaginative people. Um, and I think that's, a, that's the appeal of the Harry Potter series, if you ask me. Now, <clears throat> as I said, I read all these books in 2015 within an eight-week period. That was before the Fantastic Beasts. That was before the Cursed Child, which I've never seen on the stage. I read this book. It's a hunk of fan fiction. It's pretty bad. Um, but I got into this Harry Potter thing just before and just in enough time to have J.K. Rowling break my heart last December. So let's talk a little bit about her transphobic uh, comments. And let's look at, uh, I don't remember how I found out about this. This is the Los Angeles Times showing you how mainstream this went. But Rowling, Ms. Rowling, Joe as we call her, um, tweeted about a case involving uh, someone named Maya Forstater. You can Google this, find out all about it. She made this remarkable tweet, sleep with any consenting adult who will have you. <clears throat> of course, if they won't consent, if they're not adults, um, if, uh, if they won't have you, <laughs> then you're probably committing some kind of horrible crime. Um, it's a far cry from love whoever you choose which I think you would want to wish on any human being. But uh, JK is referring to some abstract transgender individual which she regards as less than human, or at least that's what her fans took it as. And uh, this was December 2019, December 19th. <laughs> Over the Christmas and New Year's holidays, her fans were just tearing their hair out, wondering what had gone wrong, what is this lady doing with her billion dollar royalties, um, why is she going off on transgender people? Because this is so out of tune with what they thought Harry Potter was all about. Um, who's Maya Forstater? Anyway, you can read all about it. Uh, Maya Forstater was a tax <coughs> specialist for something called the Center for Global Development. She was working in London. She was making some pretty horrible tweets about transgender people uh, transgender women are just men in dresses and, and saying horrible things. Um, and for some reason, they did not renew her contract. Her, her uh, colleagues thought that she was creating a hostile environment. And she brought a lawsuit, and this is the judgment. She lost her case. And Rowling uh, is responding to this. She thinks this is outrageous. Uh, she thinks justice was not served. Um <clears throat> Emma Watson uh, had already, this was before the tweets, she was uh, taking a stand on transgender rights. She wore this lovely t-shirt. 
Um, of course, anything Emma Watson does or says, I'll agree with. But uh, she, it says trans rights are human rights. Um, and Daniel Radcliffe felt compelled to make this statement on the Trevor Project, which is an LGBTQ website. Um, and he was distressed by his uh, lovely Joe's um, tweets. He says, uh, he ends his uh, comments by saying, um, I hope that, he's, say, he's saying essentially, I hope that Joe's comments will not taint your memories of the Harry Potter stories too much. And I think the active ingredient here is too much because I think he clearly feels that <laughs> the author has tainted her work in some way. I'll leave it to you to decide. Um, J.K. Rowling herself put out a an essay called Turf Wars originally. She's retitled it into this title. J.K. Rowling writes about her reasons for speaking out on sex and gender issues. She reveals her own um, gender confusion as a teenager. Uh, she talks about being uh, in a, an abusive marriage. Uh, all kinds of revelations. Um, and you would think that a 3,000 word essay might satisfy her critics, but in fact, it uh, only um, add, added fuel to the fire. In fact, um, one of her long-standing fan organizations, the Leaky Cauldron, they do conventions, they do blogs, they do uh, podcasts. Uh, I've listened to many of them. They're very intelligent. Some of her earliest fans, they say, <clears throat> we find the use of her influence and privilege to target marginalized people to be out of step with the message of acceptance and empowerment we find in her books and celebrate it. <coughs> by the Harry Potter community. And uh, they're not canceling Harry Potter. They're not burning their books. They're not throwing their wands into the flames. They are just separating the author from their love of this wizarding world. You can ask yourself if that's possible. Um, people like the uh, Robert F. Kennedy Human Rights Award asked for their award back. Uh, Rowling has been... Um, Quite, uh, quite liberal and progressive in, in her philanthropies. She's donated uh, millions to, to different charitable causes, but the <clears throat> RFK people uh, wanted their, their statue of Bobby Kennedy. You can see here in the center. They wanted their little statue back, and uh, they rebuked um, the author for uh, her views on gender issues. Um, and... Well, you can decide for yourself. What I'd like you to do is you can, you can click on any of these, Google any of this stuff. You could spend weeks, months finding out. You can make up your own mind as to whether or not um, the author has destroyed your love of these books. This is a $29, no, this, is a, this was a $35 hardcover. There it is. Um, do you want to throw that into the flames now because of uh, because of her statements, her tweets? Uh, this is a little bit bigger than than the Alice Walker controversy with the color purple and um, her lizard people <laughs> reading her bedside reading. So um, <clears throat> take a take a wild guess about my personal views on this, uh, but. My, my views don't matter. Um, what I'd like you to do is go on the discussion board and I'll have a link for you and I'll have a prompt. Um, what, what do you think? Please don't say everyone's entitled to their opinion because that's not a defense or an argument or anything that I don't already know. So don't waste my time reading, having to read that. Um, but just tell me, does this affect, can you separate the art from the artist? Does it affect your enjoyment? Um, do you wish Ms. Rowling would come to her senses or do you agree with her? Do you think that uh, sex is determined at birth and you have to live your gender role like a muggle? <laughs> I'll leave it to you. Thank you for watching.